Now we will commence a press takeout by the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Japan, uh, Yoshimasa Hayashi. Thank you. And uh, as President of the Security Council, I convened an open debate on the rule of law among nations. I chose this topic because the rule of law is what is needed in today's world, which faces a multitude of crises. You might think that I have the Russian aggression against Ukraine in mind. Well, I don't deny it, but Japan strongly condemns the aggression, which is a serious challenge to the international order based on the rule of law, including the UN Charter. We demand the Russia implement in good faith the series of anger resolutions and uh, ICJ order on provisional measures. Uh, facing the current circumstances, the world requires unity or instead of division. Uh, however, challenges surrounding the Security Council are not limited to that. The world is best by uh, beset by conflicts, violence, terrorism, and geopolitical tensions ranging from Africa to Middle East to Latin America to the Asia Pacific. What is essential is to get back to the rule of law, uh, the breaking away from rule by force. This is true not only for Ukraine, but also for every corner of the globe. That is why I called for uniting for unit, uh, the rule of law in my statement this morning. This is consistent principle that will guide Japan's two years as a member of the Security Council. Today's meeting is a kickoff in this regard. During the open debate, I emphasize the following three essential elements regarding the rule of law. First, honor your agreements. This includes imp implementing in good faith uh, the United Nations Charter, UN resolutions, international judgments, etc. Arbitrary interpretations of the international law are not acceptable. And second, never relate borders by force or coercion. Third, cooperate and confront violation of the United Nations Charter. And I am grateful for the participation today by Secretary General Guterres, President of the ICJ Donahue, Presa Akande of the University of Oxford, and 75 countries, including foreign ministers from three countries. I uh, deeply appreciate that many member states responded with robust uh, statements today. So we look forward uh, to, be, uh, to a continued vibrant discussion. I hope that today's meeting will further deepen uh, the international community's recognitions of the importance of the rule of law rather than rule by force. Thank you. Now we will take a question or two. Uh, please raise your hand if you have. Okay, to James Bays from Al Jazeera. We all watched you, Foreign Minister, chair the Security Council meeting, but sitting around that table, around the Security Council table, was one member, a permanent member, that's broken the most basic tenet of international law and of the UN Charter by invading its neighbor. Doesn't this make a mockery of all your words and just demonstrate the impotence of the Security Council? Uh, thank you. And, uh uh, we think that uh, Russia's aggression against Ukraine uh, is an outrageous act that shakes the very foundation of the international order that the international community has built up over a long period uh, of hard work and many sacrifices. And however, like you mentioned, the Security Council has not been able to respond effectively to Russia's aggression against Ukraine. So it is in a time of trial. So Japan will not tolerate any attempts to unilaterally change the status quo by force. And we will continue to work with the international community to urge Russia to immediately cease its aggression and withdraw its troops from Ukraine territory. At the same time, in order to restore confidence in Security Council, we, as a member of the Council, we communicate and cooperate closely with other member states so that the Council can fulfill its role as it's expected to do. 
Lady Nixon. Thank you. Thank you, Foreign Minister. It's Pamela Falk from CBS News. Mm -hmm. We heard very grim assessments in the Security Council meeting about rule of law, including on North Korea. Mm -hmm. What do you think needs to be done to reform the UN and reform the Security Council? Would Japan like to be a permanent member of that council? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Security Council needs to be enlarged in both the permanent and non-permanent seats. And this is especially true for Africa. And Japan can also be a candidate for a new permanent member. We need reform not because of ambitions of specific countries, but because of the greater good for the United Nations. First, the Security Council should reflect the realities of the current world, not that of 78 years ago. Second, the Security Council reform is indispensable part of strengthening the functions of the whole United Nations, which is the bulwark of multilateralism and the rule of law. So the Security Council reform is possible and achievable. A majority of the P5 is now positive to the Security Council reform as the US is shifting to a more positive stance. So about 70 countries, seven zero countries, nearly double the number from the previous year mentioned Security Council reform in the general debate last September. So it is very important to take, this, uh, take advantage of this momentum to take specific action to launch, uh, launch uh, text-based negotiations. Thank you. I'm afraid the minister needs to leave, so thank you very much for your participation. Thank you. How do you think the war is going in Ukraine?